Okay, for this video, or for this recipe, I have oregano and rosemary that are whole. And I have I put in one tablespoon of those. And I'm going to put in one tablespoon of basil, give or take. I have some whole um, herbs, so I'm going to put it in this little chopper and blend them all up together. I'm going to put a tablespoon and a half of onion powder. Tablespoon of garlic powder. And I like cumin. You don't have to use the cumin if you don't want. I'm going to just use a half a tablespoon. It's just a little extra layer of flavor. I have a cup of sifted flour. Chopper work for me. It's a lot easier if you know how to use your equipment. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is a hand me down. Things terrible. Let me switch gears here. Get my other chopper out. I know this one will work right. Get the lid off of this. Thing is going in the trash because that's never going to work right. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, now I'm going to excuse my clanking. In all these seasonings, I am going to put. dry country 100% grated par parmesan cheese. And then I'm going to take this over to a plug and chop it real quick. I did that was just so that I can get those herbs a little smaller. I'm just fumble fingers today. I'm going to oops, mix that in with that good one, spices. Mm, that smells yummy. I'm going to mix that in with that cup of sifted flour. Got a bit of something to mix with. I have that first package of chicken in the pressure cooker, in the Instapot. Just let it go on the meat setting. 
and it's going to um, it said cook for 180 minutes so whatever I've just sprinkled it with some onion and garlic powder those are really good go-to's in my house and yeah okay so step one and step two the breading and then I'm coming over some eggs these pretty eggs I love being someplace where you can get eggs from the farmers and they're such a different bright color of yolk Nice deep orange, good quality. And if you can't get that, you can't get that, but. And I see, oops. I have a little bit of an eggshell thing running over here. And I caught it. Okay, gonna put the eggs. Keep washing my hands. Scramble these up. Just a little touch of water. Break that album up a little bit. Okay, now we got some good egg wash going on there. Let's see. This is a lot of chicken to break down. Boy, howdy. Excited to have all these great meals for my family. So now I'm digging into bag number two and let me move some things and pull you back here a little bit. See, what's your view like here, folks? Okay. Well, you've seen people cut chicken up before. These things are just monstrous. They're so huge. And I'm making chicken nuggets. So I'm going to take off... And this yucky stuff. And I think I'll throw that into like uh, chicken soup stock. There's a little bit of bone there. It's funny how an unboxing video can turn into a cooking video. I'm off. Usually those just slide right off with the knife. That's not going to go to waste. Maybe I should get to set that on. Use disposables. So have one less thing I have to clean. Yeah, nobody else. Nobody likes to eat these yucky parts in there. Chicken nuggets. Now, for cutting them up, there's always that skinny point on the chicken breast. I'm going to cut them this way, so it's a little bit along the grain. And if you can see, the 
chicken breasts have nice pink color to them. They're not all washed out and white. I'm going to cut about one inch chunks. And they're going to get tossed in some straight up flour. Flour with nothing in it. And oh, these are big chicken breasts. They're thick too. This might seem like a lot of work for chicken nuggets, but you know what? I know what's in them, as opposed to all that store-bought stuff. Make sure my egg mixture is, and you can flavor your batter and seasoning any way you like. This is just the way I happen to be doing it today. I thought the Parmesan cheese would give it a extra flavor, a little bit of salt to it without being too much. And okay, those are coating nicely in the flour. Nice juicy pieces of chicken. It's just straight up strips or chicken breasts. This would be easy enough to do it one-handed, but Too many little pieces I'm going to have to do two hands on this one. Drip the egg mixture off a little better. Okay, put it in my seasoned coating, put them out on my pan, spaced a little bit. And I'm just going to keep doing this with chicken breasts until I'm either out of coating mixtures or out of room on my pants, one or the other. And then once I've got my pans loaded, I'm going to stick them in my deep freeze. Let them freeze up solid. And then I can take and bag them up once they're solid. And then I will have them to use in my air fryer. These are good, good size to use on the air fryer. Oops, too much flour. Okay, one thing at a time, Sue. I'm trying to be two-handed and it's not working for me very well. My left brain and my right brain were competing with each other. And that doesn't work well. Okay. Out of here, out of the flour. This will just make for a nice, fluffier, crunchier product when it comes out of the air fryer to do the flour and egg and then the seasoned. Now, I suppose if you were um, keto or something like that, you can use an almond flour instead of the regular all-purpose flour that I have done here. And that's a good option. I know lots of people, I think, I think almond flour is keto. I know a lot of people use that. Ooh, the flour is something up on my fingers. It feels so gross. Y'all use that word gross? I grew up with the word gross. Ooh, that's gross. This is such an easy thing to do and it's just, it's gonna make for a better meal for my family. Oops, that one didn't get enough stuff on it. If you got too much yellow showing through on your crust, you didn't roll it around on the flour too enough. Okay, sticky, sticky. I gotta rinse my fingers before I go on to the next chicken breast. Okay. 
Now I'm going to start with doing four of these chicken breasts and see how far I get. I think it's going to be quite a lot. So. And when I'm all done, they just go in the pan like that, throw them in the freezer, let them freeze up solid for a couple of hours, and then you can put them in a Ziploc and they're ready to go into the air fryer. So I hope you all like this recipe and I'll bring you back when I'm ready for the next one. There's a lot of stuff I do have to trim off of these. I don't know that it's necessarily as much or the same or different as what you get in the grocery store. You know, I've gotten, I've gotten super trim chicken breast before and I've got not so super trim, trim chicken breasts from the grocery store. I guess it depends on what day it is. Ooh, I don't like that thing. That silvery thing that runs through. Okay. That looks better. That's looking better. Where are we going with this one? This way. I still don't like that piece of fat. Off it goes into the stock pot. I'm very particular about my meat. I don't like what I call slimy things in my food. So, yeah, that uh, that's where I'm at with all this super trimming. Super trim! What's it like in your part of the world right now? We have spring has sprung. We're getting a kick out of watching everybody from the hometown talking about the super blooms in California. We're having a lot of wildflowers blooming out here in Arizona. And yeah, all of our allergies are on high alert right now. Benadryl is my friend so that I can sleep at night. husband got off the freeway last night and instantly went into an allergy attack. Poor guy. But, uh, yeah, tis the season. Spring has sprung, needless to say. Look at the size of these things. They're just massive. Massive chicken breasts. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Okay, stock pot. I think if I cut it down the center, this will be easier to deal with. Let me sit over there for a minute with the stock pot stuff. Because I happen to pick the little tiniest cutting board I have today for this. And let's see what happens when I edit all of this stuff out. What I decide to leave in the video and what I decide to cut out. Yes, I am curling my fingers under because I don't want to cut them off with my very sharp knife. Saw one that's trying to sneak through there. Yeah, I'll keep that. I'll just toss that whole thing. I plenty there. My daughter's very funny. She doesn't like to touch raw chicken at all. Do any of you have a hard time with raw chicken? I know some people will use rubber gloves, but. I just prefer to use my hands and wash my hands really well when I'm all done. Get that excess flour off into the egg wash. Let's 
see. So I'm cooking up some ch of the chicken for shredded chicken, which I can use in burritos and enchiladas, that sort of thing. I'm going to take some of the chicken breasts and put them straight into a Ziploc bag with like barbecue sauce and freeze them up and then that's what I call a dump meal where I can put it straight into the cooker in the morning whether it be the slow cooker or the instant pot you can thaw it or not whichever you so choose and sometimes with my fibromyalgia I like to have some really really simple meals trying out this chicken from the savory butcher which is doing the same kind of thing that um, Zacon did which some of you are familiar with and Zacon went defunct nobody knows why except them so thought we'd try out this new company and it looks the meat looks good it looks pretty juicy it's not for what they were claiming as far as um, trimmed I don't think it's as trimmed as they say it was but I'm kind of picky you saw me cutting stuff off of there so yeah who knows sloppy egg mixture This smells really good with all the herbs and the Parmesan cheese. These are going to be yummy. Yummy meals. Chicken is so cheap too compared to a lot of other things. And now that there's been all the flooding in the Midwest, I'm sure beef prices are going to go up. The savory butcher price on a, I think it was like a 40 pound box of 97, 97 whatever that is, ground beef, you know, super, super lean stuff, was $179. So I'm gonna save my pennies up for that because I have a feeling it's only going to get worse. Ground beef prices are going to go up because those poor farmers lost so much back there. It breaks my heart for those families. And it'd be interesting to see how they do or don't recover from these losses. Prayers are with them. And I hope yours are too. But this is because I don't process my own meat. I'm hoping to do eggs. Mr. Gardner has to build me a coop still. We just got the tortoise moved into his new habitat which I'll show you in another video and I'm going to continue this yeah tortoise likes his new habitat it's we were weeding the area out and then decided to leave some of them and some of the natural grasses that were in there He's liking that really well. And yesterday I saw the quail running around in there with him. I love watching the quail. They're very, very funny bird to watch. I don't know if you have quail in your part of the world. Their little bobbing headpieces up and down. They're running. 
They look like they stick their necks out and take off running, just like a roadrunner does that too. Their little feet going a mile a minute. Boy, this breading stuff is really cookie. I don't do a lot of breading. I do a lot of meats with sauces on them. Or frying or barbecuing, that kind of thing. So, I can do it. I know how to do it. I just don't do a lot of it. My nose is itching now. Should have put an apron on. Then I would have had some place to wipe my hands. Tossing and swirling and turning. What is your favorite thing to bread? And do you have a favorite breading recipe? You can leave me those notes down in the comments. It'll be kind of fun to share those recipes with people. And who knows, it might be something I'd like to try out too. So, here's to simple chicken dinners. This tray is getting there almost full. I've got some more breading to do and We'll see you on the flip side. Thanks, everybody.